We're going to take you through putting our Jake's spindle lift on a club car DS. We always tell you to check the dust covers on the front hub. If your car has the metal dust cap on the front hub, you need the appropriate lift kit for 2004 and a half and older. If your car has a black plastic dust cover on the front hub, you need the lift kit for the 2004 and a half and newer. The lift kit installation is the same, but the spindles are a little bit different, so you need to check your front hub to see which lift kit you need. You want to jack the car up and put it on jack stands. Uh, we have ours on a lift, so it's up off the ground where we can work on a little easier. The first step is removing the wheels and tires. The next step is removing the hub from the car. You need to remove the dust cover from the front hub. And then using an adjustable wrench. And uh, first you got to remove the cotter pin. And use an adjustable wrench, remove the nut that is holding the hub to the car. You want to save all your bolts and cotter pins for reinstallation of the hub to the new spindle. Remove the cotter pins from both the tie rod ends and then using a 916 wrench, remove the nuts that are holding the tie rod ends to the steering arms. Now that you have the nuts off the tie rod ends, you want to use what we call a pickle fork or a tie rod lifter to bring the tie rod end off the steering arm. Now if you don't have a tie rod lifter, you can tap on the steering arm, which will help lift those up. In a three quarter inch ratchet, take the nut off of the stock kingpin that's holding the spindle to the car. Now that the nut is off the kingpin, lift up on the A arm, which will allow you to slide the spindle off of the kingpin. You want to save the thrust washer for the installation of our new spindle. The next step is taking your spindles and steering arms out of the box and we want to install the steering arms to the spindles. What we want you to see is we got the passenger side spindle as we're looking at the front of the car. The passenger side steering arm has the bent steering arm for your tie rod. The other side just has a straight for your driver's side. So using half inch wrench and ratchets and the supplied bolts securely fasten the steering arms to both spindles. Now that you got the bolts tapped through the spindle, you want to take the steering arm with your tie rod mount going to the inside of the car and securely tighten as shown. Again, we're looking as it would be from the front of the car and this is the passenger side. As you can see the Waverly washer stays on the bottom of the kingpin. We're going to take and throw a little grease on the kingpin. And now taking your spindle with the steering arm already assembled to it, you're going to slide it down on the kingpin. Using the stock thrust washer mount the spindle to the upper AR mount and the kingpin using the stock nut. Securely tighten to the car. Install the tie rod ends to the new steering arms using the factory slotted nuts and make sure you reinstall your cotter pins to both locations. Now we're going to get ready to reinstall the hubs to the spindle. It's always a good idea to check your bearings and grease them before installation and add a little bit of grease to the axle. As you can see all the spindles have holes pre-drilled in them that if you ever wanted to add our hydraulic front brake kit all you do is pop off the plug and the holes are threaded 
that will allow you to put front brakes on this car, which will increase the stopping power three times. Using the stock hardware, reinstall the hub to the car. Now, if your stock hub had the plastic dust covers, you are going to want to use our supplied slotted nut and cotter pin instead of the stock nut. And that is for cars 2004 and a half and newer with the plastic dust cover. You can see our spindles have grease fittings. You want to grease the spindle when you're done and your tie rod ends. Once you got the passenger side done, you're ready to perform the same steps to the driver's side. Now we're going to show you how to adjust the toe. We don't have the wheels and tires on this car. We want to show you it's easier this way that you can see it. But once you have the wheels and tires on the car and the car on the ground, this is your main drag link. There is a jam nut on both the driver side and passenger side. You want to loosen the jam nut, which will allow you to turn the tie rod either way to make to give you the the correct toe setting. Once the toe is set correct, we want it to be towed in about an eighth to a quarter of an inch. Once you have the correct toe setting, if you need to center your steering wheel, you want to loosen the jam nuts on the tie rod that's coming out of the steering box, which will allow you to center your steering if you need to do that. After you have all the correct alignment done, you want to make sure the jam nuts are securely tightened back up. Now we're going to install the rear lift. You want to jack the cart up and place the frame on jack stands and put a car jack under the rear swing arm or the rear differential. This will allow us to drop the rear once we remove the leaf springs. Remove the wheels and tires from both sides of the car. Remove the nuts that are holding the stock U-bolts to the car from both the driver and passenger side, then remove the U-bolts from the car. These will not be reused. Remove the nut that is holding the stock shock to the shock mount. Save the nut and bushings for reinstallation of the shock. Remove the brake cable holder from both sides of the car. This will allow the brake cable to drop and give us room to take the rear of the car apart. Save these for reinstallation. The next step is to jack the rear differential or rear swing arm up a little bit. This will take the weight off the leaf springs, which will make it easier for you to unattach the leaf springs. Unattach the leaf springs from both the front and rear leaf spring mounts. You want to save the bolts and bushings for reinstallation. Now that the leaf springs are loose, you want to take them off the car and we're going to re loosely reinstall them above the axle to the front mounts on both sides of the car. The stock U-bolt holes are 7 16th. We send along a heavier duty half inch U-bolt, so you need to enlarge both stock holes on both sides of the car to half inch. Okay. This makes the rear lift stronger. All right, in the stock U-bolt plate, take the supplied Allen cap screw with the Allen head up and the stock lock nut. Securely tighten this to your U-bolt mount. This is going to go in the center pin of the axle and keep the rear end square. The next step, you're going to take the aluminum riser and then put it on the axle, but as you can see, there's a taller end and a shorter end. You want to make sure that the shorter end goes towards the front of the car. Place it on the axle as shown. Now using the jack under the car, you want to raise the axle and put the center pin of the leaf spring in the center pin hole of the rear lift mount.
Now that you have the rear risers on both sides of the car, take the new shock mounts with the shock mount to the inside and the back of the car. Place the center pin of the leaf spring in the shock mount and using your stock hardware, reinstall the shock mount to the car and the U-bolt goes down through the top shock plate as shown. Next step, take the stock brake cable plate, install with the Allen cap up into the center pin hole of the rear axle. Your U-bolt goes through the two holes that you enlarged and securely install with the provided lock nuts and then reattach your brake cables. So do this to both sides of the cart. Using the stock bolts and bushings, reinstall the rear leaf spring to the rear leaf spring mounts. Securely tighten the both sides of the car. Now that the rear lift is completely installed, you want to double check all your bolts, they're securely tightened, your stock shock bolts, your new half inch nuts at the bottom, your brake cables are reattached, and you got your cotter pins back in. Install your new wheels and tires, and you're done.